everyone, welcome back to science. I'm Miss Catherine and today we're going to complete lesson 3.3 in matter and energy in ecosystems. Um, pause the video at this time and grab the materials that you will need for our lesson today. And here's the click path if you are following along online and our heading for our paper today. Again, pause the video so you can get all set up. For warm up thinking today, we're going to reflect a little bit on what we figured out in chapter two and how that applies um, to what we've been doing here in chapter three. Um, so in chapter two, you learned that the decomposer population in the biodome decreased. Um, and this meant that fewer organisms were doing cellular respiration. And as a result, less carbon dioxide was given off. So the amount of carbon dioxide in the air decreased. And in this chapter, we've been trying to consider, well, where did that carbon go? Um, if the carbon is no longer in the air in the form of abiotic matter, um, then where could it be? At this time, I'd like you to pause the video and review the two claims I have here for you below and explain which claim you think best answers this chapter three question here in bold. Is it claim one that states the carbon that used to be in the air is no longer in the biodome, so the total carbon decreased? Or claim two, the carbon that used to be in the air is now in another part of the ecosystem, so the total carbon stayed the same. When I'm reviewing those two claims, um, I can eliminate claim number one um, because I know that the biodome is a closed system. And so that means no matter enters or exits. Um, and so the total carbon can't decrease. And last lesson, when we did the carbon game, um, we kept moving around the carbon tokens, uh, but our total amount of the carbon tokens stayed the same, was always 30. Um, so that to me means that claim number two uh, best answers our question uh, because I know that our total carbon, our total matter, stays the same in a closed ecosystem. Um, and so there are two very important key concepts um, around this idea of a closed system and matter staying the same. Uh, so at this time, again, pause the video and please make sure that you record both of these key concepts on your paper beneath your warm up thinking for today. So our first key concept reads, since carbon cannot be produced or used up, the total amount of carbon in a closed ecosystem does not change. And our second key concept states that if the amount of carbon increased in abiotic matter, then it also decreased in biotic matter. If the amount of carbon decreased in abiotic matter, then it also increased in biotic matter. And that second statement is just reminding us that if it's increasing in one spot, it's decreasing somewhere else and vice versa. And we had seen this image before in a reading. And again, that just is reminding us um, of what these two key concepts are trying to illustrate. That we are always moving carbon among these components of the ecosystem through those natural processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration and eating and dying. Um, and remember that red arrow is representing um, some human interactions, some human adjustments to the way the system works through our burning of fossil fuels. And that um, action is increasing the amount of carbon in our abiotic matter um, because it's taking that carbon that is stored in dead matter and releasing it into the atmosphere. So we know this decrease in decomposer population led to the decrease in carbon dioxide. Um, and we've tested this claim in the sim previously uh, when we uh, killed off all of the decomposers. Um, after that action, we saw a decrease in the carbon dioxide in the air as the effect of um, that action. So today, when we look to the sim, um, we're no longer looking for evidence of this claim. We've already gathered that. We are going to look for where did the carbon go? 
um, because again, it has to be somewhere. It's not being destroyed. It's not leaving the bio biodome. It's just being transferred somewhere else. Um, so in our submission today, we want to determine where did that missing carbon go after the, um, or as an effect, I should say, of our decrease in the decomposer population. Um, so if you have access to the sim at this time, you can pause the video, complete the submission. Um, as you do that, consider these two questions I have here for you. What happened to the carbon that used to be in the air? Where did that carbon go? Um, and then record your observations um, around where the missing carbon is. Um, if you don't have access to the sim or you'd like to follow along with me, I'm gonna go ahead at this time and get my sim up and running. Um, so again, we are in lesson 3.3. We just did the warm up. We're in activity two now. Um, you can find the sim link here or again from the shortcut. And my sim's already up and running. Um, and I wanna see the effect of this change of the decrease in decomposer population. So I'm gonna leave my decomposers there. I'm not going to kill them off yet. And I'm gonna start my sim. And again, I'm gonna speed up um, the rate of the sim just because I'm impatient. Um, and I'm gonna let this run as normal for a little bit because again, I wanna see and I wanna compare the difference of when I had the decomposer population um, to when I don't. Um, and remember, I'm looking particularly for carbon. Where is it? Okay. And remember the little black dots in our sim represent the carbon. Um, so I have the black dots up here representing carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. And then I have the black dots here inside that larger orange particle to represent the carbon within the energy storage molecules. Okay. So we know that when our decomposers, when their population decreased, that the carbon that was once in the air in the form of carbon dioxide um, reduced and went somewhere else. And we're trying to figure out where is that somewhere else? Where is it that it, that it went? Um, so I paused my sim so that I could kill off all of these decomposers um, quickly here. So I think I've done it. And I'm gonna start my sim up again. And I'm trying to figure out where the carbon is now that these decomposers once were releasing into the atmosphere. And I'm not really sure right now where it is. Um, so I'm gonna keep, keep this sim going um, because I don't, I don't necessarily see um, right now a noticeable difference in the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. Um, it, it didn't happen immediately. Um, so to me, that means I need to just give this sim a little bit more time. Um, I am noticing that I have, you know, some secondary consumers here that died off. And I have less of them now. I have no more decomposers. And when, oh, like right there, one of those secondary consumers died off and that little energy storage molecule went down into that dead matter and carried that carbon with it. And things seem to be slowing down here a little bit. Um, I, I don't have any decomposers. I barely have any secondary consumers. Um, so they're not releasing that carbon into the atmosphere um, as carbon dioxide. And now I just, I didn't kill off the secondary consumers, but now they, they just died off. They didn't have enough energy storage molecules. They died. So now that carbon is down here in dead matter. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going pretty slow here on my consumers in releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. My producers are, are looking like they're, they're doing okay. So what seems to be happening here is that when I didn't have any decomposers, um, it reduced the food source for the secondary consumers. And when the decomposers died, their carbon 
um, in the form of those unused energy storage molecules went down here into the dead matter. And again, when the secondary consumers died off, their carbon in the form of their energy storage molecules went down here into the dead matter. And where it didn't go was into the atmosphere. So if I go back and I consider um, what it is I am trying to determine here, I'm trying to determine where the missing carbon went. I know that it's no longer in the atmosphere um, because I have less cellular respiration happening with these um, decomposers dying off and then these secondary consumers dying off as a result of that. Um, so I know I have less carbon dioxide. Um, so where is that carbon? Well, it seems to me like it's down here in this dead matter, um, that it's just staying here. Um, so if this um, biotic matter is no longer alive um, and it's no longer releasing carbon in the form of carbon dioxide um, as it exhales in um, cellular respiration, then that carbon is just staying within um, that object and it's just now dead and it's just now down here hanging out um, underground here in this dead matter. Kind of like those fossil fuels have that carbon that's hanging out um, because it's dead matter from things that were once living. So it seems to me that where this carbon going is going is inside um, of this dead matter component of our ecosystem. From our SIM investigation, it seems as though this missing carbon is being stored down here in the form of dead matter um, after this decrease in the decomposer population. Um, so once they died, that matter uh, went, that carbon went down to the dead matter instead of being released into the atmosphere through cellular respiration. So we have a new message here from Dr. Brian Corey. Um, and it states that I've been reading through the biodome files to try and get a better sense of what went wrong in the biodome. You've been focusing a lot on decomposers in this chapter, so I left some notes in the files. I'd like you to look at these files again and use my notes to help you think about what might have caused the decomposer population to decrease. With any luck, we might be able to come up with a good explanation for the biodome's failure. So again, if we're thinking, where did this carbon go? It seems to be going in the dead matter after the decomposer population decreased. But we still don't know why the decomposer population decreased. And if we want to help our Econauts build a better biodome, we need to explain to them why the decomposer population decreased, causing all of that carbon to be um, stored in the dead matter rather than being released into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide as these decomposers uh, were conducting cellular respiration. Um, so you may recall um, in the very first lesson of this unit, we examined um, some articles called the Biodome Files, and these were records that our Econauts kept um, around their time in the Biodome. Um, so Dr. Corey left us some notes in the Biodome files. Um, so we're going to check that out. If you have access to Amplify Online, then you can pause the video at this time and review those files. As you do that, and as you're reading through the files, look for Dr. Corey's notes. Um, there are some particularly in files two and three. And as you're looking through the files, you want to annotate for places where you see evidence indicating what may have caused the decomposer population to decrease, okay? Um, so we're now here in activity three, if you're following along online. So we just did the sim, we're on three, um, and you will see here uh, links to all of the different files that are within this Biodome file set. Um, I'm going to, on my screen, just pay attention to file two and file three because those are the ones in which Dr. Corey left us some notes um, to check out, okay? So let's go to file two first. And file two is where we're finding out about the Econauts themselves, who they are in their biography, as well as their job description for what it is they were responsible for doing within the biodome, okay? So I'm gonna scroll down this, maybe. 
Oh, Margo's coming to say hi. Because we're waiting for my internet. There we go. Okay. Um, so we're going to scroll down. And we already noticed previously that um, there wasn't an ecologist on the team, which seemed kind of weird to us. Um, and I don't know. I don't really want to read all about each individual person. Um, here we go. All right. So here's their job description. So let's look at um, what exactly were these people responsible for doing here in the biodome. So we had a gardener, picked fruits and vegetables, delivered to the chef, planted new fruits and vegetables as necessary. Groundskeeper oops, uh, maintained the biodome grounds, rake up dead leaves, placed them in sealed garbage bags, and buried them at least six feet underground. That is puzzling to me. I'm gonna highlight that, okay? Um, so if this person raked up dead leaves, placed them in a garbage bag, buried them underground. Um, dead leaves are a type of dead matter. And this dead matter is where the carbon from the atmosphere is now, okay? Well, I'm gonna note that. All right, so we had a computer systems operator, making sure the computer system is working properly. Someone is checking and maintaining the water system. We have a chef that prepares food for the residents. We have a hunter, hunted some rabbits to eat and deliver to the chef, as well as search for fruits and edible plants. Someone who cared for the goats, and someone providing medical care. Burial duty. In order to keep the biodome looking orderly and full of life, we will bury all, any animals or plants that die. They will be placed in sealed garbage bags and buried at least six feet underground. Bury garbage as well. Okay, so that kind of explains why up here, this groundskeeper was raking up the dead leaves, putting them in a garbage bag and burying them because they decided that they wanted to keep the biodome like looking neat and nice um, so that they decided to bury everything um, place it in a garbage bag before they buried it, okay? And here's our note here from Dr. Corey. Why did they decide to bury the garbage in the dead matter? A lot of decomposer bacteria can't survive below six feet because they need oxygen. Um, and so that's making me consider um, if the dead matter is buried, then the decomposers um, can't break it down because they don't have enough oxygen underground. Okay, so let's go to um, the, that was file two. Let's go to file three. And file three is that list of recommended organisms to include. And remember, oh, there's my internet again. Remember that um, there were some things in here that were crossed off, okay? And when I'm looking at things that are crossed off, it looks like um, there were less, uh, less decomposers to start with as compared to the other organisms. Like there's a lot of these decomposers that are crossed off, like no worms, no pill bugs, no beetles. Um, they're just relying on bacteria and fungus that's in the soil to begin with. They didn't introduce any of these other kinds of decomposers. Um, and so our note from Dr. Corey says, I wonder why they decided to not include worms Bacteria need worms to break down dead matter into smaller pieces so bacteria can feed on it. Oh, okay, so they have bacteria, but they don't have worms to help that bacteria break down that dead matter. Um, so I'm gonna summarize that. Okay, so the Econauts have soil bacteria to break down the dead matter, however, 
they do not have worms that help break down the dead matter for the worms to then finish. Okay, so like the worms kind of start the job that the bacteria then finishes. And without the worms, then the bacteria can't, can't do its part. Okay, so let's go back to what we were, we were considering, okay? We were reading through those files and annotating for places um, where we saw some evidence that indicates what caused the decomposer population to decrease, okay? Um, so at this time, I want you to pause the video and I want you on your paper to answer these two questions. Um, so review your annotations and based on the evidence that you annotated, I want you to write a claim that can explain what caused the decomposer population to decrease. And then describe the evidence you found in the biodome files that supports that claim. So when I'm thinking about the annotations that I made, um, I noted that um, the Econauts buried their dead, um, their, their, their dead matter. Um, they put it in a garbage bag and they buried that underground. And by putting the um, dead matter in a garbage bag, then the bacteria that's in the soil can't access that dead matter. They, they, the bacteria can't get through the plastic. Bacteria doesn't break down plastic. It breaks down um, dead living things. And if that garbage then was also buried underground, there was an oxygen down there for the decomposers um, to take in for cellular respiration to help them get the energy that they need to survive from the dead matter. So if our decomposers aren't able to have oxygen or they're not able to access the dead matter that they're using, um, to get the energy storage molecules from, then they're going to die off and therefore their population is going to decrease. Additionally, our Econauts did not have any worms. Um, and so the worms are important because they start the process of breaking down the dead matter so that the bacteria can then finish the job. And if I don't have any worms, then the decomposers, the bacteria that's there can't access some of those energy storage molecules in the dead matter um, and therefore will die off and the decomposer population will decrease. Um, so it seems to be that this process, this policy they had of burying the dead matter um, really contributed to the decomposer population decreasing. Great job today. As we reflect on lesson 3.3 before next time, um, share your claim that we just wrote about what caused the decomposer population to decrease along with the evidence um, that we have to support that claim. And if you would like to reflect on what we've figured out so far uh, around carbon, you can complete lesson 3.3 activity four in Amplify Online. I will see you next time.